Hello and welcome to East Carolina University and ECU Live series as a part of ECU New Student Orientation. My name is Erin and I'm representing the Office of Global Affairs today. We appreciate you joining us. Today we are going to cover studying abroad through ECU. This session will be recorded and will be archived and available on the official ECU YouTube page in just a few days. Please do give us some time to get it captioned and uploaded. In order to make sure that we are following accessibility guidelines, the archived recorded session will be closed captioned. If further accommodations are required, please contact the Office of Disability Services. So to get started, I would like to first introduce those that I have with me today. I'll start with Dr. Rezik, the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Global Affairs, and allow for him to say a few words. Dr. Rezik. Thank you very much, Aaron. So as Aaron mentioned, my name's John Rezik, and I serve as the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Global Affairs here at ECU. And our office works in a variety of areas, all related to international education of some sort. And one of the most prominent programs that we have are our study abroad programs. And um, that's what we'll be talking about today. And I'll just to give you a couple of um, highlights of, of some of the things I think that are very important. And um, hopefully, uh, not only the new students, but also maybe your parents can also uh, take a listen to, to some of our um, to, to this program and to some of the, the recommendations that we have. First off, I would like to say that uh, for many of you, for most of you probably, the reason why you're here at this session is that study abroad is an exciting adventure. Um, we have over 200 destinations uh, that you can attend, uh, either a semester or a summer program, um, other short-term programs as well. And there are a host of things uh, that you can do. It's a very exciting time to travel abroad. Obviously, the last uh, few months have been uh, a little bit uh, trying, but um, hopefully over the next uh, four years, <laughs> travel will open up and, and you'll be able to experience some of the wonderful things that the, the world offers. Um, and once again, as I mentioned, it's a great time to do that um, while you're in, uh, in college. And that's why most of you are here. Um, however, I would like to point out a couple other things. Most importantly, um, Study abroad is not just a fun time, and it can be, but it's extraordinarily important uh, to think of this as a great investment in your future. Um, for many years, um, I worked as the director of international business at my previous university. And as a requirement of the program, students had to do study abroad uh, for a period of at least 10 weeks, and they had to do an internship as, um, as part of their program. And what we found uh, was an exceptional placement rate for students who completed the program. And it was primarily due to these additional activities that they're able to put on the resume. Um, if you study abroad, if you do an internship, and I recommend both, um, your resume will find its way to the top of the, of the pile when it comes to getting a job after completion. It's extraordinarily important to remember that. It demonstrates to employers that you're willing to take risks that you're willing to step outside your comfort zone and do something that you're not maybe used to doing. It tells them that you have some degree of cultural competence and understanding. There are a host of things that this one line in your resume tells you. Um, so take advantage of this. Um, our placement rates, as I mentioned, were extraordinarily high, much higher than for the rest of the university and for the rest of the college. So you are putting yourself out there um, in terms of uh, making yourself a, uh, a great candidate for, for a job once you finish. Um, but it also uh, not only will help you get that job, but it also will help you in the interview process because you'll have great wonderful stories to tell um, about how you develop leadership skills or how you overcame challenges, these types of things that our employers are really looking for. Um, so if you're able to do this, if you want to do this, and obviously if you're listening or if you're um, on the call right now, this is something you want to do, and, and um, I very strongly encourage you to do that. The next portion, so think of this as a great investment in your future. The next portion is very much related to that. Um, my third point. This is something that can be affordable, um, but you have to plan now. Uh, the cost, is, as you um, will see once you uh, look into this a little further, um, are reasonable. But for most students, um, it does. It will take a little bit of planning ahead, maybe a little bit of um, potentially summer employment or potentially um, other types of uh, employment. Um, financial aid is an option, um, but this is definitely an affordable option, whether it be a short term study abroad program in the summer or even uh, more affordable is the longer term semester programs. And Aaron will talk about that in a little bit. 
So don't think of this necessarily as uh, extraordinarily burdensome. If you can, if you can plan ahead, um, you can overcome some of the financial uh, constraints. And then finally, the other thing that you have to think about is this is something that that will not hold you back in terms of graduation. You will be able to graduate on time. You will be able to complete your degree, hopefully in four years. Um, and it shouldn't set you back, particularly if you're thinking now and you're, you're planning ahead. So um, there are a ton of positives. There's a ton of benefits that you can that you uh, will be able to get from studying abroad. And um, and Aaron will go over some more of those. He'll go over he'll go over some of the options that you have. Um, but once again, in in summing up, this can be a great adventure for you, and will be a great adventure for you. It's a great investment. It shouldn't inhibit your uh, your time of graduation, and it is extremely affordable if you plan ahead. The last thing I want to mention to you about some of our global um, programming, um, and, and I believe Aaron will mention this as well, at ECU, you have an extraordinary opportunity to participate in um, one of the greatest global virtual exchange programs in the world. Um, ECU is um, the Secretariat of a of an um, organization called Global Partners in Education. And what that does basically allows you uh, to have one course called Global Understanding, where you meet with individuals from another country several times throughout the semester. And you actually connect with them and, and engage in uh, uh, course-based discussion and then also in projects outside of the, outside of the classroom. Um, and this is really a great stair step into kind of learning a little bit about other cultures, learning a little bit about other people. And um, it once again, it's one of our more, most popular programs, um, and it and it definitely is a an, an area where uh, you can learn some of those cultural competence skills that you later use, hopefully, in your study abroad programs. Um, so the fact that you're here is really encouraging. If you're you're making good choices already, um, and uh, with that, I will go ahead and, and turn it over to Aaron. Um, we're really glad to have you um, at ECU, and I hope that I see you, and I hope that Aaron sees you in the coming years. Um, investigating um, study abroad programming more, uh, more specifically. So thank you very much. And I hope that um, uh, your time at ECU is as wonderful as, as so many countless students who have come before you. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I had muted myself and then I forgot to unmute, but thank you, Dr. Rezik. Um, you covered quite a bit of what I'm gonna go into more detail with for you. But I also wanna introduce Michaela. She is one of our global ambassadors and she's gonna join us a little bit later in the presentation to talk about her own experience studying abroad through ECU. So just wanted to make you aware of her presence as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. I know you wanna learn more. And so I'm gonna share my screen so you can see my presentation. All right, so again, my name is Erin Taylor. I'm the Education Abroad Advisor here at ECU, and I'm just going to tell you exactly what you need to know about studying abroad through ECU. Throughout this presentation, you are going to learn about the eligibility and requirements to study abroad, the number of programs that we have, their flexibility, program types, finances, how study abroad can impact your future. You're going to hear from other pirates. Again, this is where Michaela is going to join us. I'll let you know of some deadlines to be aware of, what you can expect from the Office of Global Affairs, how to learn more, what other opportunities are available for you, how to stay connected, and of course, towards the end, I will save time to answer any questions that you may have. So we do require for students to have a 2.5 minimum GPA in order to study abroad. That's our minimum. So some programs may be more competitive and they may ask for a higher GPA requirement, but a good rule of thumb is 2.5. Students also have to have completed 24 credit hours prior to departure. There is one program that's an exception for this, which I'll go into more detail in just a few minutes. But in general, by the time you finished your freshman year, you could study abroad right then and there over the summer. You'd be eligible to go. You also have to be a full-time student and in good academic and disciplinary standing. And of course, you have to have a valid passport. For those of you who don't have passports, that is a service that my office offers. The Office of Global Affairs is a passport facility. However, right now, nationally, due to COVID-19, passports that are non-emergency have been suspended. 
so our services have been too. But I wanted to make you aware of that resource for you in the future, because that will be something that we can offer. The great thing about studying abroad is you do get to earn credits towards your degree. As Dr. Rezek said, we have over 200 programs that go to more than 60 different countries all over the world. So there's something for everyone and every degree plan. Again, the earlier you start planning, start planning right now, the more flexibility you'll have and the more options that you'll have as well. The flexibility of studying abroad programs does allow you to customize your experience to fit your needs and your priorities. You can study abroad for a semester, a full academic year, a summer session, over winter break, and even spring break. And you can study abroad more than once. From my own personal experience, I completed both my undergraduate degree and my graduate degree through ECU. And throughout both of those degrees, I studied abroad a total of three times. So it's definitely something that you can do more than once. The majority of the programs are taught in English. However, if you do want to focus on language learning, there are programs taught in different languages as well. And this is a great opportunity for you to take classes that are not necessarily offered through ECU. One of my study abroad programs was to Hong Kong, and I was able to learn Chinese courses, which weren't offered at that time at ECU. For accommodations, you get to choose from on-campus housing, off-campus housing, homestays, and more. So it really does show just how flexible your program can be. The win of studying abroad is up to you, but you do have to keep a few factors in mind. Again, your eligibility. So have you completed 24 credit hours? Do you meet that 2.5 GPA minimum? You wanna think about that. But you also wanna think about ideal times for your degree plan. For some of you, you may be in more structured majors, especially things like nursing, where you have to take certain classes on campus in a certain order, and it may feel more restricting for you to try to study abroad, but it does not eliminate your possibilities. We do have short-term programs available for those of you with limited time, and we have semester and academic programs available for those of you with more flexible time. I know we keep saying this, but the earlier you start planning, the greater opportunities you are gonna have and the greater flexibility. I like to say, as soon as you start thinking about studying abroad, go ahead and make an appointment with us, come to one of our information sessions and learn more, and make an appointment with your academic advisor, because we really can help you plan when is the best time to go, and how to save certain classes so that you can take them abroad and really get the bang for your buck. There are an infinite number of reasons as to why you should study abroad, but a few that we wanted to highlight are that you get to travel to amazing locations, places that you may have only seen in pictures or movies you actually get to go visit. You get to meet new people around the world and make lifelong friendships. My favorite example is actually a personal one of mine, but when I studied abroad in Germany, eight or nine years ago, the best friend that I made over there is actually my roommate here in the United States now. So that friendship really has lasted. You get to experience a lot of different languages firsthand. You can gain a new perspective on your own country. And as Dr. Rezek said, it is an um, investment for your future. You really do get a great resume enhancer out of it. There are a few different types of programs at ECU that I do want to talk about. The first is our faculty-led options. This is where an ECU professor takes a group of ECU students abroad and they teach ECU courses. Since you are taking direct ECU credit, these classes would come back with letter grades and impact your GPA. These are discipline specific and typically run over the summer, anywhere from two weeks for up to two months. However, we are seeing an increase in spring break programs as well. The costs vary because each professor builds the study abroad program around the content of their course, so it really is a unique opportunity for you. ECU Tuscany is a faculty-led program, but it's quite unique in itself as well. It's only one of two programs like this in the state, and it does run for the fall, spring, and summer semesters. The program fee is all-inclusive, so you do pay for excursions, apartment living, and dinner when classes are in sessions, all included in that program fee. And you can take Italian language courses, but they are not required. It's typically less than out of state tuition. And what makes it so unique is that we do have a satellite campus, a satellite miniature ECU campus over in Italy, where we have ECU faculty that stay there full time. It's a great way to study abroad, but still stay connected to the ECU community. Exchanges are probably what you most typically think of when you think of studying abroad. 
This is where we send a student abroad and that university sends a student here to study at ECU. The transfer credit does come back as pass fail, so you would not receive a letter grade and it does not impact your GPA. But the great thing about exchange programs is the same cost, the same tuition that you pay right now to come to ECU is the same cost you would pay straight to ECU just like normal, but you get to study abroad for that semester. The bilateral exchanges are the least competitive. We have a one-to-one -one relationship with these universities abroad, so they do prioritize ECU applications. You typically pay your housing and meals in the host country, but again, your ECU tuition, you pay straight to ECU. The BWNC programming is a little more competitive because it's open to the entire UNC system. And again, it's the same um, cost you pay your housing and fees in country and your tuition to ECU. And finally, for the exchanges, the International Student Exchange Program, or ICEP programs, are the most competitive, but they offer the most locations. They have 250 international member universities, so you really have a lot of options to choose from. This is a great option as well as far as cost, because not only do you pay your ECU tuition directly to ECU like normal, but you pay your housing and your meals just like you would for a semester here, but you get to study abroad. Some other programs to be aware of, ISEP also offers direct programming. So this is where you apply directly through ISEP to that university instead of through an exchange program. And you do have a 99.7% placement rate at your top university choice, and it may be cheaper than the tuition for ECU. Consortium programs include the UNC Charlotte semester in Spain, UNC Wilmington semester in Paris, Educatrip in Granada, Spain, and semester at sea. And you can actually apply through study abroad companies or other universities that are going abroad as well. And this may offer opportunities to go to countries that are not offered through ECU. When you're thinking of priorities for selecting your program, you wanna think about a couple of different things. I know we've mentioned timeframe, but not only when it fits into your degree plan and into your four years here at ECU, but also how long you want to be abroad. Do you wanna stay for a full academic year or do you wanna go for a semester, summer break, spring break? You wanna keep that in mind. As well as location, is there a city or a country that you've always wanted to visit? Are you really interested in immersing yourself in a certain language? That may be a priority for you as well. And of course, course availability for your major. We do wanna make sure that you're bringing back credits that count towards your degree. As Dr. Rezek said, this is something that can keep you on track to graduate on time. It also may help you graduate even earlier. And budget. When it comes to studying abroad on a budget, that can be intimidating, but it is quite affordable. Again, most semester long programs allow you to pay your normal ECU tuition rates directly to ECU. So that's the similar cost. Students can use their financial aid packages to study abroad as well. So any scholarships, grants, loans, VA benefits, anything like that that you receive can be applied to study abroad. You can also apply it to your summer study abroad program. You do have to take six credit hours, but that's just two courses over the summer and you can have some financial support to study abroad. Finally, we also have quite a few study abroad scholarships available. These are listed on our website, which is piratesabroad.ecu.edu. We list both ECU scholarships and national scholarships, but we also highly recommend familiarizing yourself with the ECU award portal. This is a great resource for students. You create a profile, answer a few questions, and it does populate a list of scholarships that you're eligible for. I also like to tell students to kind of think outside of the box when it comes to scholarships and fundraising, we have a lot of support for you there as well. But we have one student who was a Girl Scout growing up and she applied for a scholarship to study abroad through the Girl Scout program. And it actually awarded enough money to cover all of her travel costs. So you can think about things like that as well. So some of the investment towards your future and long-term impact of studying abroad is how it will impact your resume and your chances of getting a job. Only 2% of US students do study abroad, so it will put you in an elite category right off the bat that separates you from your peers when you are applying for jobs. You can gain valuable experience that shows certain skill sets that have been gained, such as the comfort of being able to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, problem solving skills, time management, and the ability to work with people from diverse backgrounds. Also, 90% of study abroad students do land a job within six months of graduating, 
So it does shorten that process for you as well. All right, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and I'm gonna let Michaela pull herself up and give a quick introduction. And then we can kind of talk to her about her study abroad experience. Michaela? Can you see me? We cannot see you. Okay, now we can. Okay, hi. Okay, like Aaron said, I'm Michaela. Um, I studied abroad for a semester with the ECU Tuscany program. Um, I personally feel like that was the best option for me because I was switching between majors and the program itself allows you to get those elective classes that you need out of the way. Because regardless of your degree, you have to take electives, humanities, fine arts, and the Tuscany program gives you a wide selection of classes and courses to choose from. Um, and... All right, don't worry, I've got questions for you. So how did you decide to study abroad? How did you decide that was something you wanted to do? I love traveling personally. Um, I travel during the summer all the time with the exception of this summer, but uh, traveling mostly and then like seeing other people like do it. And I had a cousin who studied abroad in Spain and she told me about it. And now she teaches, in well, she used to teach English there for like just the, there's programs you can do where you can teach English as a teacher. And she just told me all about her experience there. And I was like, wow, that sounds really exciting to be able to learn across the country, getting the same information I need versus being on campus in Greenville. I can be in Italy. So that was a really nice jump for it. And what barriers did you feel were present for you when you were thinking of studying abroad? And how did you overcome them? Um, financial barriers. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. I was a little nervous as far as it being too expensive. But being an in-state tuition and I received financial aid, I used my financial aid to go towards the cost of it and it covered the majority of it. And then to pay for the remainder of it, I worked for the summer and I also applied for the Rivers scholarship and I got that. And so that covered all my costs. And so then when I went, the only thing I had to worry about paying for was outside class activities, like when we wanted to travel to different countries for the weekend and stuff like that. And I think, oh, and also being like scared, like of being alone in a whole nother country, but with faculty led programs, the teachers and the faculty that they have on campus are always right there with you. For the ECU Tuscany program, they give you a little cell phone. So that way, in case of emergency, like you can call them, you have access to them. And they also, they, the phones come loaded with all the faculty members numbers, um, the place that we stayed and like, the doctor that we had to, if we need an emergency like that, we had that number in there as well for us. So there was definitely no more concerns of being alone while I was there. And also I know the faculty we have at the study abroad office, they're also amazing. If anything were to ever happen, I'm sure like I could have called them without the hesitation. And you kind of mentioned this, but can you talk about the scholarship application process and how that went for you for the River Scholarship? Yeah, on the ECU page, um, there's a scholarship page and there's a whole bunch of scholarships that um, st study abroad students are eligible for. And you can fill out a main general application. And then once you see the scholarships that you are directly eligible for, you can just literally hit apply. It'll transfer all that information to that scholarship. So really you don't have to go and fill out every single scholarship individually, which is usually what prevents students from filling out scholarships because they take so long. But if you do it through the ECU page, it's really simple. Fill out that one application and then submit it to all the ones that you are eligible for. And then as far as other sources, I also use the GoFundMe. My mom put it on her Facebook. I put it on my social media. And I know I also use that as a way to get more money for when I study abroad. All right. And then what was your favorite thing about your program? Oh, goodness. I've been thinking about this question. <laughs> um, I think it would be when we went to Cinque Terre in Italy, and it is literally the most beautiful place on the face of the earth. I can't be convinced of anything else. It's literally just crystal clear water and then like a whole bunch of rocks. We took a boat for our geology class to go see the different types of erosion and the different material rocks and the sliding that the land was doing. And we were on the boat, we're just sitting here watching, they're serving us like little snacks and stuff, and it was the best weather ever. And then 
um, our teachers were teaching us and it was just the whole energy of everything around us was just absolutely amazing. And the people there, they just, they're so kind and friendly. They're always offering, oh, you want more food, more drink, more um, anything. Just, they're just so kind and they just fed us so well. It was just amazing. I think that was my favorite though. That makes me want to go. <laughs> I definitely recommend it. It is the best place to be. It is so beautiful. I can't even describe. I can't. Pictures don't even do justice. You have to see it in person. Well, what do you think that you feel like you've gained from your study abroad experience? Um, time management, definitely. Um, especially when we traveled a lot, we had to make sure we traveled by train a lot throughout Italy and you can't, if you miss a train, obviously, if you have multiple trains, you miss one train, like that will mess you up a lot. So we had to make sure we were very punctual as far as like travel stuff. And then money management as well. Cause while you're over there, um, the money that you have is what you're going to have. And there's a lot of stuff that you're going to want to do. And you do also have to be reasonable, like about the stuff to do like, Oh, do I really need this $500 t-shirt that, like, no, you don't need that t-shirt. Like there's so many other like better things you could use that money for later on and trying not to use them all your money at the very beginning of the trip so that you have enough at the end of it. Um, I definitely gained a lot of independence as far as again, like traveling and stuff because usually my mom does all my traveling. She handles all the planes where we're staying and stuff. I had to learn how to do that myself, like as far as buying tickets um, finding places to stay that were in a good, safe area, making sure I'd be back in time for class. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey. And then my last question for you, Michaela, what advice do you have for the students that are here who are thinking about studying abroad? Do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't even hesitate thinking about it. It is the best experience that you could ever possibly have. You're not gonna get another opportunity to be able to earn credits towards your degree while traveling and I personally think it's like a better experience to be able to learn the stuff that you're learning outside of a typical four room wall like when you're in ECU in the giant lecture rooms it's it's boring we all know it's boring but when you're in Italy and I took my yoga class in Italy and we took it in Tuscany and it was literally the most beautiful views we took the class at like 6 a.m but the sun was rising and it felt great outside and you couldn't beat it like you can't that's way better than taking yoga in Christian Berry gym. <laughs> it's way better. Um, definitely plan ahead for it. Um, so that way you can get the best experience out of it and make sure you look into where you want to study abroad to don't base your study abroad trip off of where off of somewhere else somebody else has been or just because your friends are going there. Because there are plenty of people I personally know that say, oh, I wouldn't know what, I wish I wouldn't have went because she went because your trip looked X, Y, Z. Make sure you're going where you want to because that's where you want to go. You have an interest in it and that's where your heart is at. Follow your heart as far as where you want to go. Well, thank you so much, Michaela. And Michaela is going to stick around for our questions at the end. So if you do have any questions specifically for her or her student experience studying abroad, please feel free to put those in the Q&A towards the end as well. So I am going to go back to sharing my screen and I want to just go ahead and share some of the deadlines to be aware of. If you wanted to study abroad during a fall semester, the application deadline is the February 15th of that same year. Spring semester, the deadline is September 15th, although ECU Tuscany does tend to fill up quicker. And summer semester, that deadline is January 31st. But these also fill up very quickly, so I do recommend applying as soon as the application does open. Again, you can find more information about our programs as well as the application process on our website, which is piratesabroad.ecu.edu. So what can you expect from the Office of Global Affairs throughout your study abroad experience? First, we are knowledgeable. We have firsthand experience within international education and study abroad and all of our staff members have participated in a study abroad program in some capacity, so we're familiar with those processes. We are also knowledgeable about ECU programs and the requirements for these programs, and we can help you find programs that best suit the student needs and priorities. For advising and assistance, we're available and accessible throughout the entire study abroad process, 
So from the moment you come to us and express interest in studying abroad, all the way through your return and even after you've returned, we are very hands on and we have a lot of resources available for you. And we do work closely with departments to ensure your credit transfers. For health and safety, this is our top priority for our students. So we do track world events and follow CDC and Department of State guidelines regarding travel to ensure the safety and well being of our students. As you can imagine, and as Dr. Rezek kind of mentioned earlier, we did not send any students abroad this summer, and we are not sending any abroad this fall due to COVID-19. If you're interested in learning more, we hold weekly information sessions every Tuesday and Wednesday at 4 o'clock while uh, classes are in session. These are held at the International House, which is pictured here. This building is located between the New Student Center and the McDonald's on 10th Street. And this is also where my office is. So once campus reopens, this is where you can find me. Please feel free to stop by anytime, um, pick my brain, ask questions. And you can also email us at studyabroad at ecu.edu with any questions you have, or if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment. I'm also available now virtually, so we can set up appointments over the summer as well. Again, our website is piratesabroad.ecu.edu. So we have a lot of resources available. The scholarship list is on this website. Our program list is on this website. So it's a great resource for you as well. Some other opportunities I do wanna make you aware of. Our first friends program is where we pair incoming international students with current ECU students to help them adjust to life at ECU and in the United States. This is a great opportunity for you to see how it is for students to study abroad here as well as to prepare for your own study abroad experience. Global gatherings are cultural events that we host throughout the year. These range anywhere from our inter international coffee hours to events that we host during International Education Week, potlucks, things like that, as well as our study abroad fair. We are gonna be hosting a study abroad fair this fall, so do keep your eyes open for that information. That's a great opportunity to talk to the actual faculty leaders and program leaders that run these programs as well as students that participated in them. You also could become an ECULA conversation partner. Our ECU Language Academy is for students that are learning English as a second language. So we do hold sessions for them to practice conversational English with native speakers. So this would be a great opportunity for you to get involved as well. Our global understanding courses are the ones that Dr. Rezek mentioned earlier. They are normal ECU courses, but they allow you to work with three different universities around the world. It's all through video conferencing and chats. So it's real time student led conferencing. You get to build intercultural communication and collaboration skills that are essential in today's world. And they are offered through a number of departments and fulfill general education, social sciences and global diversity requirements. These classes are conducted in English and many partner institutions like to use this as an opportunity to practice their English. So they really look forward working with ECU students. And countries that are assigned to each class, that is based on a number of factors, including the time zones, academic calendars, and holidays. We do try to give each class as much diversity as possible. And most of the time you will end up working with students from three different regions of the world. So to give you a little bit of idea of just how diverse these courses are, for this fall, they are in anthropology, communication, English, ethnic studies, geography, which is a global environment class, hospitality management, political science, psychology, and sociology. If you are interested in learning more about these courses or seeing exactly what classes are being offered, you can find out more information on ecu.edu slash gu class. So I did want to link as well to our social media accounts. This is a great way to stay connected with us. We post a lot of information about scholarship opportunities, upcoming events and workshops, uh, general information, as well as interactive content and stories from students that have studied abroad. So most smartphones do come with a QR reader embedded in the camera. So if you open up your phone right now and you point it at these squares, it should take you directly to our social media pages, but if you're not able to do that now, I did also link our handles at the bottom. So for Facebook, you can find us under ECU Education Abroad, Instagram and Twitter, our handles are ECU Abroad. And of course, you can always email us at studyabroad at ecu.edu. One last thing I do wanna leave you with is the idea that pirates can study abroad. 
Nearly 700 ECU students do study abroad each year. So just imagine, where will you go? And on that note, I'd like to open it up for questions. So I am gonna stop sharing my screen. That way we can start looking at any questions that you guys have. There is a Q&A option during the chat. So feel free to put any questions that you have there or any questions you have for Michaela as well. I'll just wait a few minutes to see if we have any of those. Okay, so we do have one question. In the ECU Tuscany program, can you supplement your Tuscany class schedule with online classes from main campus in Greenville? So Michaela, if you have any information on that, I'd love to hear your opinion. But with studying abroad, you are taking a full class load. So you still would be taking direct ECU classes during your ECU Tuscany trip. You would be taking English 1000 over there, and it would be the exact same as if you were taking English 1000 here. So depending on how your schedule is, you technically could take um, online classes, but it may be more difficult for you just because of the online aspect while you are studying abroad and experience, experiencing so many opportunities and excitement. So yes, you can, but also you don't have to because you would be getting a full class schedule from ECU Tuscany. Michaela, do you have anything to add to that? Um, can you see me? Or can you hear me at least? Okay. Yes. I do know that one student on my program, she was taking a uh, math. I'm pretty sure it was like math 1065 while we were there and she took it online. Um, honestly, she did find it a little challenging to still maintain, like keeping up, doing well in the class and how she wanted to, just because when you are abroad, there's a lot of things like to do, especially with the ECU Tuscany program. You are doing stuff literally from the minute you get off the plane with Linda you are going, 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 going nonstop. Like every single day you have classes from early in the morning and they usually last till late in the day, about six o'clock and then you have dinner. And then if there's something still planned after dinner. So I personally recommend like holding off if you can on doing an online class or extra classes while you're there. If you are capable to and you really need to, then all means go ahead. But personally, I recommend focusing on being in the moment with Tuscany. One thing I do wanna to add to that as well, you wanna keep in mind the time difference. So any of the deadlines, or if you have online lectures that you have to watch, you may be six hours ahead, or depending on where you go, you may be 12 hours ahead, so, or behind. You just wanna keep that in mind as well. Um, we have another question, where was my favorite trip? So this is a hard one, I, my favorite study abroad trip probably because it was the most recent was the one to Hong Kong, just because it was the most recent and also one of the most challenging because it really pushed me outside of my knowledge of what I know every day. Um, what you perceive every day as, as normal and what you don't even realize is happening in, in your life or the way you go about things. When you go to a culture that's vastly different from yours, it really kind of calls attention to that. But at the same time, when you do get abroad, you can take so many trips like just because you're in that country, you still can go to a lot of other countries. So um, I would also say one of my favorite trips was when I studied abroad in Germany, my favorite band at the time happened to be British. And so I was able to just hop on a flight and go to London for a weekend and see them perform live. So there's, there's really a lot that you can do when you study abroad. Michaela, do you wanna answer that one as well? Sure, um, let's see, was it my favorite place? Where, where was your favorite trip? I think my favorite trip was Barcelona. We went to Barcelona for one of the little three day weekend. We went to Barcelona and Milan within three days. Uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, <laughs> but Barcelona, um, being able to go to Spain, the food there is absolutely amazing. Um, I learned a lot being there and it wasn't even a like it wasn't organized by like the Tuscany program it was a place that me and my roommate just decided to up and go to um and we got to go to the beach we got there's a lot of touristy places to get to go to and then also we stayed in a hostel while we were there which is another place it's, it's like an airbnb you'll learn if you study abroad that that'll be one of the best options you can do when traveling 
but we stayed in a hostel and it was a really nice hostel. They have at, actually multiple locations and we stayed in the same, not brand, but same company, I guess you can call it. And when we went to Milan and they organized dinner for us, they played music that night that we were there in the uh, garage area and they were all really friendly. And they even organized something for all the people staying there that night to go to a place to go out that night together. So we all went out. It was nice and fun, really. And the trip was only 75 euros, I think, between the flight and then staying in a hostel. And then all we had to pay for at that point was food. And the food was also pretty cheap when we were there as well. So that was really nice. That was my favorite. Okay. Um, we also have the question, how safe did you guys feel the first week? So I will let Michaela answer this um, just because her study abroad experience is more recent than mine. So I'll speak on that too, though, but go ahead. Um, it was, I felt it was pretty safe. Again, like I said earlier, um, the program for Tuscany, at least they give you a phone and it already comes like with, it's prepaid, so it doesn't cost you anything. It comes a part of your tuition, so you have access to the phone the minute you get there. Um, Linda organized like, or she informed us of places like to go and like tips, like when you have your pre departure orientation, they give you plenty of like tips and advice and a whole spill on safety as far as when you're going somewhere, flight safety, um, booking Airbnbs, hostels and everything like that safely, not traveling alone, which is kind of common sense not to travel alone, especially when you're abroad, but Usually when you're there, you'll meet somebody and it'll be easy. You won't want to go by yourself because it's always more fun to have somebody with you. But it felt pretty safe to me. I never once felt like I was endangered or scared of anything. Everybody there, at least where I went, they were super friendly, super kind. Um, I know I was nervous when I first went over there that nobody would speak English. But anytime I had a question and I would try to like speak Italian to them to ask a question, they'd be like English. And I'd be like, I mean, I prefer English. Like, if you can speak that, that'd be much better. And then they just tell me, oh, well, you're going to go this way, this way, and this way. And then, yeah, they were very helpful. So I never felt scared or endangered or anything like that. Very safe. And I, I can, I'm kind of in the unique position to be able to speak from two perspectives. From my student perspective, when I was actually studying abroad, I agree with Michaela. I never once felt unsafe. Um, as long as you exhibit the same, you know, safety procedures you do here as far as not making sure someone knows where you are at all times or if you're going somewhere and just practicing those same skills that you've, you've cultivated here for your safety here, you'll be fine. And we do have a lot in place as far as, like Michaela said, the pre-departure orientation. We go over a lot of health and safety issues there. But even if you don't do a faculty-led program, so as Michaela was speaking, she kept referencing Linda. Linda Darty is the faculty leader of the ECU Tuscany program. So she really does head a lot of things and, and provide the students a lot of resources. Even if you do not participate in a faculty led program and you are the only person from ECU going to this university in China or somewhere drastically different or far away, we still have a lot of resources in place. We do partner with these universities. The universities have resources for international students. They have orientations for them there. When I got off the plane in Germany, they picked me up from the train station. They took me to my dorm. They helped me set up a bank account. It's very supportive. There's a great network that we have in place to keep our students safe and to make sure that they feel safe. Because just because you are safe doesn't necessarily mean you feel safe. So that is a priority as well. So Aaron, uh, just to follow up on that. So two things I think I would also say. Uh, first is, um, one of the things that you learn it's a great skill to have one of the things that you learn is situational awareness when you're traveling um understanding your surroundings being cognizant of where you are in the city um and, and understanding how um how others around you. and it's it's really a great skill to learn and um you do that fairly quickly i'm sure michaela would would um would second me on that and then the other thing also just kind of from a um, overall program perspective um we do have nearly eight last year uh, we had nearly 800 students that were um, abroad during the year um, and I, I will say we we did have a, one or two incidents of pickpocket um, so that is um, it does happen um, but the numbers are very very low compared to the numbers of students that we send out um, and then the other the other issue I think um, which um, no one's really talked about yet uh, but 
there are certain circumstances where um, where alcohol can be a problem, and you just have to you have to think um, about your study abroad experience. Um, and and I tell students a lot um, if you're going to do that type of thing, that would be something that you would do here on campus or not on campus here here um, in the United States. It, it whenever we do see problems, most of the problems um, do have to have to do with alcohol. So. Um, that is one thing that you should be concerned about, um, just behaviors that um, could potentially put you at risk. Um, and, uh, but other than that, um, you know, there are risks, but the risks are very, very low relative to uh, the numbers of students we send out. And, and, um, and, and in most places that we're sending students to, crime is extraordinarily low. All right. Do we have any other questions? Erin, it looks like there's a few in the chat function as well. Uh, thank you. Okay. All right, so let's see. Okay, has a summer study abroad program ever collaborated with ECU Career Services to give students the opportunity to have a job or paid internship while also taking classes abroad? There's more to this question, but I'm gonna stop there and answer that. Um, I am not 100% sure of the collaboration aspect of this. However, we do have study abroad internships available. Again, most of the time, they don't typically run in tandem with studying abroad in, in the terms of taking classes while you are abroad and also interning. Um, it is possible, depending on the country that you go to, to study abroad and work there. Some countries restrict that. For instance, Hong Kong does not allow you to have income by working if you're on a student visa, but other countries do. So that is a, a factor that can be um, pursued. And then internships can also sometimes count for course credit. So even if you did an internship abroad, you'd be getting the internship experience, but also the internship credit here at ECU as well. The second part of this question is, um, or says that that is a factor that sometimes keeps students from studying abroad during the summer because they have to work. That's absolutely valid. That We hear that a lot that, you know, studying abroad over the summer means that they can't have a summer job. But depending on where you go, I know Australia, for instance, you can work while you do study abroad, so you can get a little bit of income as well. There's a question for you, Michaela. Um, when you were in Italy, did you get the opportunity to visit other places? I did. I got the opportunity to visit several places because on the weekend, um, if Linda doesn't already have something planned for us, then we get to basically, we're free to roam. I've been to, oh my goodness, as far as Italy, I've been to Luca, Pisa, Rome, and Giamano. Uh, oh my goodness, I can't think. There's like, there's several other places within Italy. And then as far as outside of Italy, I've been to Spain. I went to Barcelona twice. Um, I went to, I went to Barcelona, I mean, Spain three times, I went to Barcelona twice, and then I went to the Canary Islands for spring break. Um, we went to London, we went to Paris, uh, I had friends go to Croatia and Amsterdam as well, and there were some students who also went to Switzerland for their spring break instead. Um, but yeah, during, especially with the Italy intensive programs and all the other programs, I'm sure you get the weekends free. So you're able to travel anywhere and it is very cheap to travel. So I do highly recommend to take advantage of the opportunity to travel. Um, flights are usually like anywhere from 50 to hundred euros, which is cheaper compared to paying from a flight from America all the way to Europe or wherever else you study abroad. And you can also catch trains and then they have buses as well that you can also use and they're all usually really cheap to pay for. I will say transportation abroad is so much easier than it is in the States and it's a lot cheaper as well. So I agree with Michaela, you are going to have a lot of opportunity for independent travel, no matter which program you do participate in. Um, so you really can take a lot of advantage of that and maximize um, your trip and where you get to go. So Aaron, I would just like to chime in one last time um, for those students out there or and parents. Um, so like I said, we're really happy that you chose ECU. Um, you know, you you're very valuable to us and, and you're now pirates. And so 
Um, we're exceptionally um, proud to have you. Um, there are a couple of programs that ECU has that are absolutely world class. Um, a couple on the academic side and a couple um, that I'd like to uh, point out to you. The ECU Tuscany program that Michaela mentioned, you will not find a better study abroad program in the world. I guarantee it. I mean, I, I know uh, international officers from all kinds of countries all over uh, the US and this program is special. It, it, the amount of things that you get to do for the money and the experience is world class. You're not gonna find a better program anywhere. Um, and then the global understanding class, as I mentioned, um, those classes are truly exceptional. Um, really take advantage of those two programs if you can um, while you're here. Um, they are truly, we are truly one of the best universities in the world when it comes to those two programs. Um, and so you have a unique opportunity to experience something that most students in US universities don't. Um, and that goes across the board. You the Tuscany program particularly, with Linda um, directing the program, you wouldn't, you couldn't find a more kind, um, knowledgeable person uh, to run that program. She's wonderful, and we're uh, exceptionally glad to have her. Um, and like I said, the global understanding class. Check these things out; they're really great. You see. I definitely agree. I wish that I had the opportunity to participate in ECU Tuscany as a student myself. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other questions? I know we are reaching the end of our time together. I don't see any new questions, but again, please, if you do have questions after this, you can always email us at studyabroad at ecu.edu. We have students that can help answer questions as well. Um, Michaela is one of our global ambassadors, so this is a program where students that have studied abroad come back and they kind of represent studying abroad through ECU. So it's great to be able to have their perspective for you as well. Um, so, again, if you do have more questions, please send us an email, studyabroad at ecu.edu. Oh, thank you so much. We had a comment that this has been awesome. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that we were able to provide information for you. And I will go ahead and wrap it up. I do want to thank you all for joining us today. And I'd love to thank Dr. Rezek and Michaela for helping me out and providing a lot of information for you guys and different perspectives. Um, as a reminder, this session has been recorded and a copy of this recording will be available on the official ECU YouTube channel in just a few days. We do hope you'll join us for the next session, which is a Q&A session with the orientation assistants, and that will help answer any questions that you do have. And one last time, please do not hesitate to email us or to reach out. We are available and willing to help, and our email address is studyabroad at ecu.edu. And with that, I'd like to thank you one last time, and I hope you have a great day.